Hi, uh, my name is Mark Cristiano. I'm the GIS coordinator for the Kaibab National Forest, and I'm here with my, my counterpart. Hey, I'm Anthony Davila. I'm the GIS specialist on the Kaibab National Forest. So today we're going to talk about sort of what we do uh, as GIS people for the Kaibab, and we'll talk about sort of how we got here and what we find rewarding about our work. Kaibab is divided into three ranger districts, the Williams, the Tucson, and the North Kaibab. You may recognize the giant ditch in the middle here. This is the Grand Canyon National Park. We surround the Grand Canyon, and they're one of the partners that we work with. The Kaibab, as we talked about, has many partners. Uh, many of those are tribes, and you can see here the Havasupai Indian Reservation, um, the Hopi Indian Reservation, the Navajo, um, and uh, various national parks around us, like the Grand Canyon, but also Wapaki, um, and then even the Army, the Navajo Army Depot is there as well. So we have a number of uh, partners that surround us that make uh, this complicated and interesting place to work. Um, in addition to that, we have several wilderness areas, the Saddle Mountain Wilderness and the Kanab Creek Wilderness up in the North Kaibab, and then in the Williams Ranger District, we have the, uh, the Kendrick Mountain Wilderness and the Sycamore Canyon Wilderness. These are really special places that have extra protection uh, on the Kaibab. In addition to that, we also offer a number of visitor operations. Uh, these are all of our group campgrounds, so the Jacob Lake, the 10X, the Kaibab Lake, Dogtown, and Whitehorse. The 10X campground is actually undergoing a massive expansion right now to increase it to almost 300 campsites because of its popularity and proximity to the Grand Canyon. Uh, in addition to sort of visitor operations, we have extensive timber operations or silviculture operations. And these are a restoration effort to help make the forests healthier. By uh, currently we have too many trees on the Kaibab and by cutting them down, the ones that remain become stronger and more healthy. So we work with industry to help uh, remove some of these trees from the landscape. This is the North Kaibab, and the brown you can see is the famous Ponderosa pine. Uh, this sort of greenish color is the pinyon junipers. This is the same color scheme on the Tucson, and you can see where we have our uh, Ponderosa pines and pinyon junipers. And then this is the Williams Ranger District with the same thing. You might recognize the Williams Ranger District because that's also part of what's called Four Fry, which is the Four Forest Restoration Initiative, which we are a part of, um, which is working to restore these forests back to their natural uh, ecosystems. We also have extensive animals here on the Kaibab and, and plant life as well. So you can see the, the elk, the, the deer, the mule, deer, frogs, um, different flowers, things like that. And then our most famous critter up here, which is the Abert squirrel. So, which looks very similar to its counterpart, which you would find on the North Kaibab, which is the Kaibab squirrel, which is partially what we're named for. So, uh, in addition to wildlife and timber operations, we also have extensive fire operations. And you can see a lot of those here. Uh, you can see we've, uh, we do a number of prescribed burns and then also a number of, we have a number of wildfires that usually occur every year. And we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, all of these things come together and require GIS support. We build timber maps, we help uh, during fire operations by creating fire maps, and uh, we also do tracking of uh, wildlife and the different ecosystems. So, uh, okay, come back to me. Okay, so that's uh, in sort of a nutshell, uh, the broad area that we encompass. We work very hard to support all of those specialists in uh, doing their work. And sometimes that means going out in the field, uh, helping them with their tablets or to collect data or to analyze their data to uh, help make the forest a healthier place. Okay, I'm going to kick it over to Anthony now, and he's going to show you one of the new exciting areas that we've been expanding into. Anthony, so... Hey, so I work a lot in the mobile world, and uh, right now the biggest uh, project I work, or the biggest organization I work with right now is uh, RGS Online. And so, as you can see here, uh, we have uh, the main page for the Forest Service, 
Uh, and through this page, I can access groups that we have set up for the different resource specialists on the forest. Um, now, through these groups, uh, the resources can work in the field using maps that we've uh, created and applications to collect data uh, that would help benefit the resource and the forest in the end. Um, so just to give you an example, I have a map here, a timber map here, actually. Uh, we have Williams here and uh, Flagstaff over here. And so for this uh, timber project, uh, they wanted to have a, a line, a polyline, a point, and a polygon to um, collect data in the field. And so far, this, this summer, this is the data they've collected. And as you can see here, we can just uh, kind of go into the details and uh, kind of discover more about what they've uh, collected, when they've collected it, uh, and whatnot. So, uh, so yeah, it's uh, some exciting stuff. You know, it's uh, it's all live. You know, we're we're really using technology uh, that's that's become recently available to us, and I think it's uh, exciting stuff. Cool. Thanks, Anthony. Anyways. <laughs> so, as you can see here on the Kaibab, we're working to sort of do the cutting edge stuff. Uh, in addition to what Anthony's been working on, we recently got LIDAR data for the entire forest, which is light detection and ranging. So, incredibly accurate elevation data. So, we're actually almost down to mapping individual trees out on the landscape. We also use LIDAR for uh, helping to understand the impacts of fire and uh, the impacts of timber operations by seeing which things get cut down or burned. Um, okay, so as part, oh, and I should also mention, uh, Anthony and I are not necessarily unique. Uh, every national forest out there has people like us working on them. Um, we are, exist in what's called Region 3, which is Arizona and New Mexico, and there are 11 national forests, each with their own GIS staff. And then at the regional office, there's also GIS staff that are working to uh, meet different goals and initiatives. So. I started with the Forest Service, uh, you know, I just, uh, honestly, I've worked with some amazing people uh, on some amazing projects who, um, you know, these folks are always really just passionate about what they do, and uh, it really inspires me to do my best, try to learn as much as I can from them. Um, plus, you know, we get to work on our uh, public lands, and, and you really can't beat that. So, uh, so Mark, what about you? What, what do you find rewarding? Job. You know, I, I early on in my career, I tried the private sector, and what I found was that you tend to do fairly routine, repetitive jobs, and you're always worried about the bottom line. One of the things I love about working for the U.S. Forest Service, and I used to work for the National Park Service as well, is that every day is different. You're always doing new and interesting things. You have the opportunity to try different things, and uh, you're not concerned about the bottom line. Your mission is more about protecting the outdoors and doing the best job you can. Uh, and I've always found that really exciting. You know, just I, I, someone once asked, you know, what's a typical day for you like? And I'm like, well, when I get a normal day, I'll let you know. But every day seems different and new <laughs> challenges and a lot of fun. So, and like, it's just exciting to, to know that you have such a massive impact. You know, you make a trail map and thousands of visitors use it. You make a fire map and it helps keep firefighters safe. Uh, you make um, timber maps and you're helping to restore the forest. So I just love what we do in general and I think it has a long meaningful impact that you're not going to get from say working for a private consulting firm churning out I don't know boring boring maps so I think I suspect you probably get something similar like that when you work for like cities and states and, and things like that so That's a good question. Uh, I would say have an open mind when it comes to your career, you know, even if it's, you know, not with the government. Uh, in order to find what you love doing, you know, you may have to move from agency to agency or from one region of the country to another. Uh, but I think in the end it's worth it. You know, I, I, I consider myself extremely lucky to have found something that I love doing. I think the Forest Service is just uh, going to be very well. And like Mark was saying, it's just a, it's an amazing agency. Um, and it's been, a, it's been a good ride so far, so we'll see, we'll see where it takes me. Yeah, I think my advice is probably very similar. Be willing to move. 
Uh, but in addition to that, uh, learn as much as you can in the world of GIS and definitely pick up some programming languages. Um, I think GIS is just a really exciting world. For some people, it's just an add-on to being like a wildlife biologist or something. But when you get the opportunity to just focus on GIS, I think you can have a really meaningful and amazing uh, impact that way. So yeah, keep with it. Keep looking for those job opportunities. And don't be afraid to look for internships or something like that. And uh, don't be afraid to take on some unusual project. Uh, the last piece of advice I got kind of early on in my career was don't be afraid to go where the chaos is. When something happens or something's not working very well and you go there, you have an opportunity to have a major impact. When you go to places that are stable and fixed and there's no problems, you don't get much opportunity to do anything. So I like going kind of where the chaos is and, and having a, a big impact. So cool. All righty. Cool. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate you took the time to listen to us, and uh, good luck. Um, I'm going to throw up the our contact info one more time, just so you guys can see it if you'd like to contact us. Great. Thanks.